Welcome back to the Blank of Yu Yu Hakusho. If you're just joining us, this is where we look at early 90s hit anime Yu Yu Hakusho episode by episode and focus on one specific element of visual storytelling and how the show utilizes it. Today we'll be looking at episode 3, Kuwabara, A Promise Between Men. And what struck me this time around was the show's use of lighting. The majority of the episode seems to be taking place during the warm orange glow of sunset. This time of environmental lighting, where the sun is near to the horizon, is known in photography as the golden hour, or sometimes the magic hour. In the real world, this change in color happens when light has to travel through more of Earth's atmosphere, which scatters and diminishes blue light and increases red and yellow tones, as well as softening and lengthening shadows. People tend to associate warm golden hour lighting with more magical, dreamlike atmospheres, an atmosphere a wide range of photographers and cinematographers try to utilize to evoke certain emotions. Nostalgia, melancholy, calmness. So why is it utilized here? Well, it should first be noted that this is not how the show always looks. There were scenes with this golden hour lighting in part of the previous episodes, but it was never utilized to this extent. If this is how every episode looked, it would lose a lot of its stylistic purpose. For example, the final three seasons of the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles had a sky permanent shade of red, a stylistic choice to separate it from the goofier seasons that came before. But since the red sky is always on, it serves no other artistic function. It becomes a part of the background noise for viewers to ignore. The large amount of golden hour lighting in this episode is exceptional in Yu Yu Hakusho, at least up to this point, which means that there was a deliberate purpose in using it. So why this episode? What is it about this episode that warrants this style? Well, for one, this is the first episode that isn't centered on Yusuke. He's largely an observer this time around. Instead, the story is Kuwabara's. Up to this point, all we've known about Kuwabara is his relation to Yusuke, how he greatly admired Yusuke's strength and abilities and sought to best him in street combat. But here, we see him outside of that context and learn more about him. And if you're like me, you walk away having discovered your favorite Yu Yu Hakusho character. Despite technically being a thug who gets into a brawl pretty much every day of the week, Kuwabara actually has a very pleasant nature and a strict code of honor. The first thing he does in this episode is save Keiko from some thugs and then apologize to Keiko for groping her in the last episode, an act which he did not in fact do because he was being possessed by Yusuke at the time. The fight gets Kuwabara and his gang in trouble at school. One of Kuwabara's friends, Okubo, has permission to have a job outside of school, and one of the teachers, the rat-faced Mr. Akashi, threatens to take that permission away. Akubo can only keep his job and provide for his family if Kuwabara can refrain from violence for a whole week, something not even his closest friends thinks he's capable of doing. But Kuwabara is a man of principle and goes along with it, either running away from potential fights or just allowing his attackers to clobber him. Akashi can't believe this, so he raises the stakes. Everybody in Kuwabara's gang now has to get a 50 or higher on an upcoming science test. Kuwabara may be a man of honor, but he's really not that smart. Even if he studies every waking second until the test, Okubo's job is in serious jeopardy. Man, this show's priorities really changed over time. So what does this plot have to do with this golden hour lighting? Well, I wasn't there during the creative meeting, so I can't say with any authority. Maybe they just thought it was pretty. But if I had to theorize some intent, we're getting all this soft lighting in a story that's about softening the image of this character. Kuwabara was initially perceived as an antagonistic force in the story, another element that made Yusuke's life difficult. Now we're finally developing Kuwabara as a person of value and complexity, and the lighting of the scenes is responding in kind. Light is a very important factor in visual storytelling. I mean, without light, you can't see the stuff. Commonly, lighting is used in film and television for the sake of clarity. A brightly lit shot with minimal shadows can keep the focus on the acting, the set, and any props that might be in the scene. Any use of light beyond clarity becomes a matter of style and tone. Some common examples, making the scene darker with a lot of shadows can evoke mystery and danger. Shadows hide things, be it a monster, a killer, or maybe something actually harmless, but you want to fake out the audience. 
scenes lit with bright colors can evoke childlike wonder and provide a feeling of safety. And if your work has a clear line between good and evil, you can have both those lighting schemes to create contrast. Now, all those examples I just gave were live action. Animation introduces a couple of layers of complexity in lighting because whatever you want to do with light has to be deliberately drawn into the scene frame by frame. When filming live action, you take control of existing light and shadow. In animation, you create light and shadow yourself, which on one hand is a more time-consuming process than with live action, and nowadays a lot is done with computers to help speed things along. But this also means that you have complete 100% control of the light in your work. Laws of physics be damned. Animation is deliberacy. You can't improvise on set. You have to make a choice well in advance, even if that choice is to be lazy and ignore light and shadow altogether. Yu Yu Hakusho is not lazy in that regard. Light and shadow is factored into every frame. Characters always seem to have shadows cast on them. It's used to set moves and, as evidenced by the use of this golden hour lighting, it considers how light is used in actual photography and cinematography. So. What are the actual functions of light and shadow and animation, and specifically Yu Yu Hakusho? Well, first off, one, lighting is geography. Lighting in any given scene, be it animation, film, or photography, can be put into two categories, motivated and unmotivated light. Simply put, is the source of light part of the scene? If it is, if there's a light fixture or a torch or even just the sun is out, that's considered motivated lighting. Unmotivated is when there's light, but no apparent source. Uh, this shot in Inglorious Bastards has a bright light cast down on the table in the center of the room, but there's no source for the light. It's not uncommon to have both motivated and unmotivated light in a scene. A character can be in a room with a light source, but typically the way we light spaces in our day-to-day -day lives isn't sufficient enough for film, so additional stage lights are used to fill in the shadows, these additional lights being considered unmotivated. Yu Yu Hakusho puts a heavy emphasis on motivated light. It takes into consideration where the light is coming from and what's creating the light, be it the sun or various light fixtures. Since these sources of light are actually part of the scene, you can in turn establish character geography through light and shadow. If you take two shots from the same scene, you should be able to create a rough approximation of where the elements in this scene are just by how the shadows fall on them. In this example, the shadows on Yusuke's and Botan's face indicates that the sun is behind them. The shadow on Principal Takanaka's face shows that his right side is towards the sun and his left away from it. Just from the shadows in these two shots, in these two frames, you should be able to make a rough approximation of where the sun and these three characters are in relation to each other. Now, this cut is interesting because it kind of breaks the 180 degree rule, a basic guideline in keeping on-screen elements within a certain spatial relationship. So Yusuke and Botan are looking in on Takanaka. In this shot, we know that Yusuke and Botan are off-screen to the left, looking towards the right. But when we cut to this shot, they're looking towards the left, meaning Takanaka is off screen on the left. The camera moves from roughly here to here, which is usually something you look to avoid. It can disorient the audience. But in this case, the fact that the shadows are consistent help reduce the problem. Not completely, mind you, but perhaps enough that the cut doesn't take you out of the experience. Let's consider another shot. Kuwabara is in a store while Yusuke watches outside. Now, both characters are in frames, so we don't need shadows to orient these two, but the shot still takes sources of light into consideration. Yusuke is being lit by the sun from up here, so the shadows are to his back. But Kuwabara is being lit by the store lights on the ceiling, so instead, his shirt is casting shadows on his legs. Also, to get a little off topic, we have four other people in this shot, but they don't have shadows at all. They're less detailed and they don't move, effectively making them part of the background. You're not really supposed to register them. The show does bend the rules of lighting from time to time if it feels that's the best way to serve the story. Having an empty bookstore might seem weird, but you don't want the audience focusing on these four unimportant individuals, so you kind of flatten them and make them unreal. Here's another example of this episode's fudging with lighting. 
Based on the shadows on the environment, the sun is up on the right side of the frame, and these two characters on the left are... Well, they're so far in the alley they should be in total shadow, but at least the light is hitting them on the front and casting shadows on their back. But what's up with the large guy on the right? No light should be hitting him at all, let alone the front of him, which is facing left, away from the source of light. The character is being lit by unmotivated light. In reality, this should be impossible, but the show decided that highlighting the faces and outlines of these three characters was more important than having realistic lighting. This isn't a mistake, it's a creative license. 2. Lighting is interaction There's a certain challenge in animation that doesn't exist in live action filmmaking, which is having moving elements like characters feel like they're existing in the same world as the background. See, typically in hand-drawn animation, before computers took over, you had certain elements separated by transparent cells. You drew the moving elements like characters on the cells, and then layered them on top of a background. This way, you don't have to redraw the background for every frame of animation. That cuts down on time and labor, but if you don't try and blend your character in with the background, make it seem like they belong, it's going to look like you're just putting stickers on your frame. One way to connect your character to the scene is with shadows. Something casting a shadow implies a certain dimension with the world, that laws of nature are being obeyed. Even just standing there is an act of interaction. Of course, different works have different priorities, and sometimes a work is stylized in a way that doesn't factor in shadows. I do want to emphasize that nothing I've been talking about are hardline rules of visual storytelling. They're useful tools, but you don't need every tool for every job. Characters casting shadows in Yu Yu Hakusho is useful because the show aims for a certain level of fidelity to the real world. A little stylization and things like character design, but the show does aim to give those characters weight within a real space. 3. Lighting is style I could spend 20 hours listing all the different ways light and shadow affects the mood of a piece. Hell, there have been entire genres dependent on certain lighting. A comprehensive study would just take too long. So instead of that, I'm going to point out some of the more stylistic uses of lighting in this episode. Maybe some things you might not have noticed. And when you walk away from this video and watch something else, you might find you're suddenly much more aware of how visual media utilizes light to evoke mood and atmosphere. Of course, I opened this video talking about the golden hour, so I don't think I really need to go over that again. When Keiko is assaulted walking home from school, Yusuke tries to charge at the punks despite being a ghost who can't touch anything. At the moment of attack, darker shadows fall over Yusuke's eyes to communicate his rage. Thing is, this is only one frame. It's something that you're not going to focus on, but pick up subliminally. Animation has that advantage. Every frame is meticulously drawn and detailed. It's something impossible to replicate in live action without the use of special effects. There's a scene where Akashi and another asshole teacher, Iwamoto, are chatting in a room, and with the hard shadows crossing his face and the cigarette smoke, the lighting on Iwamoto is straight up film noir, emphasizing him as one of the villains of the piece. When Kuwabara is confronted by the punks on his own, now unable to fight due to his bargain with Akashi, he's taken out of the warm, golden hour glow of the day and put into a dark tunnel. His sacrifice literally pulls him into darkness. When these guys start hitting Kuwabara, the impact is emphasized with a brief flash of light, which is a common trick to visualize the pain of being struck. What's interesting though, is that the fight that began the episode didn't have this effect. When it was a fair fight and Kuwabara was able to defend himself, the violence was less severe. Now that he just has to stand there and take abuse, the impacts are much more painful. When Kuwabara tries to cramp for his test, he ends up falling asleep at his desk. He's lit by a single desk light, spotlighting the character, emphasizing his isolation. Or at least his perceived isolation since Yusuke is haunting him at the moment. Yusuke interacts with Kuwabara through a dream and the dream sequence utilizes softer, fuzzier light to separate it from the waking world. Various light effects are replicated throughout the episode. Light reflecting off water, streaks on a window, sunbeams matched with a shot of a couple of birds to represent the freshness of morning. Small details like these can help create a certain mood, in this case, calmness and tranquility. It's amazing the amount of emotion and meaning you can instill in the manipulation of light and shadow. And even after centuries of painting, photography, film, and animation, 
we're still discovering new ways to communicate with light. Art is alchemy, the combination of elements to produce meaning, and light is a base for every piece of visual art you can brew up. And even a throwaway episode of some silly show can utilize it in interesting fashions. Light's important because, well, after all, without it, what can you even watch?